Welcome to the Phil and the Kid podcast. I'm Phil Gardner. And I'm Spiro Vesalis. And today we're here with Marco Agbaba, the Prince of Cashflow. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is legitimately like the most fucking basic bro panel. Right now, if you just look at the camera, we're all just like... It looks like we're going to talk about football or something. <laughs> We're going to start talking about real estate. They're going to be like, no fucking way you guys <laughs> yeah. buy real estate. I call bullshit. Show me your portfolio. <laughs> How many houses did you buy this week? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, All right. Down, so down we're here answer. with Marco. Oh, we're starting? Okay. Let me just. Agbaba. That's right. There it is. That's good. I pronounced it right. He's from uh, the thing. Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. And we met actually in university. That's right. At Wilfrid Laurier University. Yeah. We, we took a course together. Just by fluke, ended up in the same group. He was a good presenter, so I wanted to partner with him, obviously. And uh, the rest is history. Formed the dream team. Yeah, we did form the, form dream, the dream team. Form the dream team. Even though our, our, our presentation wasn't that great, but... Low prep time, you know? <laughs> yeah, you were busy with your real estate stuff. <laughs> I was busy just hanging. <laughs> were you doing real estate shit back then, too? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. When did you start? So, um, you know, I started when I was like 17, as soon as I came to Oh, shit, okay. Um, there was a guy, Alberto is his name. He made my res on Leicester. Do you know that one? On Leicester Street in Windsor or Which in uh, Waterloo? Which one was it? It's like, um, you know, it's like 18 floors. It's on Leicester Street. Oh, okay. Anyway, it's like a luxury student apartment. And uh, I went down to his office and I was like, hey, man, like, uh, I'll clean your floors, whatever you want. Just nice. let me learn from you. Like, you don't That's need to move. pay me. Um, and then he ended up paying me, which was cool. But that's kind of how I got into the game. And then I did student housing property management for five years. So the whole, whole time I was there. Good. Yeah. For, for anybody that like is doesn't want to like put in work just to go learn from someone that's doing what they're doing, Marco's a great example, right? Yeah, like, oh, that's that's, totally that, that's always been yeah. my mo. Like find someone who's just doing what you want to be doing and doing it to an unbelievable level. Do whatever the fuck it takes to just absorb everything they know. Like, right? dude, I would even probably pay the guy. Like, if he right. was like pay me like weekly, I would probably do yeah. that like, yeah. to learn from him. So yeah, totally worth it. it. It's pretty much an internship. Yeah. And that's what it was. 100%. Excuse me. That That's what it was like. If you go into ancient times, I'm saying ancient Greece, for example. Of course, you're saying ancient yeah, Greece. Yeah, so. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to but the back then, you would have the older men and they would teach the younger kids mm -hmm. and they would learn from them. It was pretty much an apprenticeship. You just learn what they're doing every day yeah. and you go through the motions. And that's how that's how people were taught. So nowadays, it's a little different with school and everything's set in stone. Mm -hmm. There's tests. It's, it's very different. Before, it was hands on. This is how you actually do this in real life. Mm -hmm. And this is how you do it going forward. And the kids would learn, pick up their own habits and do it their own way and pass on the, to the next generation. So yeah, yeah, it's a little sure. different now. And it's like, it's cool because like, you know, when you go to school, it's like a pretty general study that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like I did finance, but it's like, I knew I wanted to do real estate and I knew I wanted right. to build real estate. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why wouldn't I just learn from a guy that's built real estate, right? It yeah, of course. So much sense to me. So. Far more valuable to me than a school that teaches me not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely does. Science teach you that. and things and yeah, yeah, geography. Hey, Sex hey Phil, you want to turn it up a tad? Not too for much for the group. Yeah, the group, just a little bit, just like a there. touch. I remember last yeah, podcast it was a little low, and we had to turn it up. Some technical difficulties. Yeah. There you go. So, so we just actually moved our whole podcast studio. It you can't it tell. Might, it might maybe not, you yeah, can tell. I don't know. It doesn't really. You, seem, you can tell a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it seems, looks, looks way better. Like the way they see it, it looks good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This looks good. It's right more now. of a panel than yeah, a yeah. tiny little shanty corner. Yeah. yeah, before we were in like a corner, and I don't know, we were really tight. There's more space now. It feels good. Yeah, yeah. But it took back. us a little time. Marco had to deal with us just setting up. See the behind the scenes. Yeah, I saw the behind the scenes. Yeah, <laughs> we're actually uh, right now. We're in one of Phil's units. Yeah, we're in the 671 house. The 671 <laughs> house. <laughs> Which is we, a sweet uh, house. It is a yeah, sweet house. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we uh, we lost our new office space because we're finally starting to renovate that. Uh, so that we should, you know, hopefully be moved into there at some point early next year. But that was our podcast studio until Reno started. So we've moved here for maybe three weeks until this <laughs> reno starts i love it and i'm and the first that means guest here you're the first, you're guest the first and honestly probably probably only. the only one <laughs> we'll have to buy a new house to move to until that love reno it. starts and eventually we'll find a studio for this permanently yeah that'll be but that'll be now, what a few months we'll find a permanent studio i think once we might the, be uh, going well, to billy sue's house that's, <laughs> thanks billy you don't know yet but thanks billy <laughs> <laughs> i think he watch you don't have a choice yeah, you don't yeah. Have a choice. okay so i have a story for you guys all right <laughs> So I've been doing a bunch of leases this last week, running around from property to property. 
um, and holding open houses, right? <laughs> this is a ridiculous story, okay? This has probably never happened. <laughs> I, I, I've, d- I've done I, like high hundreds and pushing thousands of leases maybe. Same, and like, same. that's never happened to me. All right, so let's hear this. Carry okay. on. <laughs> so, so I'm in one of our properties, right? And uh, some properties here in Toronto, I don't know how it is uh, elsewhere. You can get like 30 people showing up to see it, which is, which is awesome. You get 30 people in odds are a few applications are coming through. Well, this, this property is a, uh, it was a basement unit. So not as desirable, but still it was, it's whatever. It's a, it's a unit. It's Toronto. It's Toronto. Yeah. It's going to get rented. Um, this one, I was in the area doing other showings. And, uh, so this one, I just said, I'll show it. There was only four people that said they were going to come. So I was expecting maybe two to show up. Um, so I'm there, I was in the area, I was in the East end. Um, and so I'm waiting, somebody shows up, I show it to them, they leave. So now they came right at the beginning of the time. I had an hour time slot, which was probably my mistake for four people. I should have just said, I'll show up at one time, but yeah, yeah. whatever. I thought more than four might show up. So I'm there and, uh, I have 55 minutes to kill and I don't know when this other person's coming. So I'm texting them. I'm calling no answer. I'm just like, I might as well wait just cause if they show up, they show up. <clears throat> so uh, I'm there, I'm waiting and it's it, the entrance is in the back of the unit, right? So I would stay in the back and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go up to the front. It was a little dark. Just wait there for a couple minutes. It's a little cold. Then come back to the back, go in, warm up a bit, do the same thing over and over just to like kill time. So I'm up, out in the front waiting and uh, this girl starts walking by and I was waiting for a girl named, I can't remember, let's say Rebecca. So I was like, she's kind of looking at me smiling. She's like, Hey, I was like, Hey, Rebecca, she's smiling. And she's like, so you're the guy I'm supposed to meet with. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. (laughs) So we go to the back. She's like, like she kind of walks in and goes in for a hug. Right. So, so I was like, I'm not going to hug a random Tinder. Is this where it's going? I don't just, uh, you'll see. So (laughs) she goes in for a hug and I kind of like go for a handshake. I'm trying to keep it professional. Yeah. yeah. So she kind of like goes away. I'm like, yeah, that's awkward. It was Becca. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is Becca. You need to slow down. So, (laughs) so we walk to the back and and we go down the stairs and uh, I'm like, so just letting you know, this place hasn't been cleaned yet. Um, (laughs) We haven't had the cleaners through. She's like, oh, it's fine. It's totally okay. I was like, yeah, it's like a, it's like a little dirty, whatever. She starts taking off her shoes. Like, no, 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 Like, keep them on, keep them on. Like, it's totally fine. Like, keep, keep on your shoes. And she's like, no, it's, it's okay. And I was like, um, okay. So I'm like sitting there, kind of awkward, showing her. She's like walking around. She's like, oh, like you just moved in. I was like, no, no, I, I don't live here. I'm just showing it. She's like, oh, okay. Walks into the bedroom. She's like, you don't even have a bed. And I was like, like we both looked at each other, and that's, that's when it kind of the moment. That's the moment. And I was like, hold on, like what right before she said that she goes like this to me right like she's like like walking around and i was like okay this is a little weird right now this, like, this girl wants the place she, she, yeah. okay, she's definitely a buyer okay so so one of our one of the property managers we work with was was telling me like hey girls might try flirting with you to get in like yeah, like yeah. to get you know a better application if they have shit credit or whatever <laughs> they might try to get like flirt yeah. so That's i was thinking of him I was credit's like, bad <laughs> you start flirting with spiro so, yeah. so i was thinking It'll like work. no 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 like I, I know what's happening here like you're not like no chance and um so i look at her and i'm like she's like wait what what's happening here and i'm like this is an open house like i'm showing this right now and she's like oh my god she starts freaking out like and she's like oh my god what's happening like uh like she's like really nervous i'm like Whoa. like i started dying laughing yeah because i was like nervous oh, <laughs> i was just laughing god. like what the what the fuck's happening like so wait did crazy. she tell you why she was there uh she's like i'm supposed to meet up with a guy and i think the address is whatever number and it was 10 more than my address well like that's got to be something like, deeper because like if she's taking off her shoes oh man, she, well she she, no 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 oh, she like, said like, she's meeting up with the guy with her friend so yeah and i was like wait a minute like, my my biggest question when he told me this i was like do, do, you, do you owe her money now like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no it was terrible oh, it was man. awful so Ugh. yeah she she went and she she like that's pretty much the end of the story. She left. I, Why do I, I miss like all the good stuff? Laughing uncontrolled. Like I called you, Phil. I called my girlfriend after. So I told her. Funny. I apologized. I was right. dying. <laughs> she wasn't happy, but I was like, I. So, <laughs> so for the people that say real estate agents just turn on lights. Yeah. Spiro just proved that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to deal with some shit. Oh, you got to suss out the escorts in the room. <laughs> uh, okay. That's so uh, that that's great. I that that's 
we yeah. just cut the podcast now. Yeah, we're good. We're <laughs> done. We're done. Yeah, thanks that's for coming all, all the yeah, way yeah, here. No, that was fantastic. <laughs> Drove four hours for this. Oh my lord. So so yeah, that's pretty much how my week went. Um, nice. Just did a bunch of leases. That was one of them. Pretty crazy. Um, how was your week, Phil? Not so bad. I mean, I actually took it pretty easy this week. Uh, a couple of my clients are on vacation, so like the ones that I'm like re- actively hunting for took a are off on vacation or moving fairly slow right now. Three actually. Um, and then after we had that, uh, the real property investments event yeah. the weekend prior, I just said, well, if they're on vacation, then I'm on vacation. <laughs> so I took, took a bit of a, took a bit of a relaxing week this week. Yeah. You haven't been around the office as much. I, I know. Mean. Cause somebody stole my fucking desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's me. I, I have his desk. <laughs> Spiro got a new job and it came with Phil's desk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you have. So, and we're, we're kind of busting at the seams. So I just, you know, my home office is looking really good <laughs> right about now. Oh, well. Um, but no, we had, I mean, we had the event on uh, on Sunday that all three of us were at. Which is weird. Yeah. Which that was, so that I was, remember walking weird. to the car and because I did not know Marco was part of the Windsor team that was going to be there yeah. at the event. But Spiro and I were there representing the Toronto squad, right? It's a real estate event where agents from each potential investment market that works. And I'm just kind of walking to the car to go grab my shit. And I'm looking like I gave Marco like the elevator look. And I'm like, hold on. I know this. Oh, shit. Well, I was friendly. I was like, yo, what up? Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 it took me a second because I'm like, I've, I've never met you at that point. I've seen you before only on the YouTubes. Yeah. So on the YouTube's, yeah, no, but I also had no, I did oh not expect uh, that you guys were part of that whole squad. At all. Yeah, it was, I didn't it was know. Pretty cool. Made for a great day. Yeah, yeah it was right. Good it was a good, good, uh, good little hangout with all the all the investor squad. Yeah. Good event in general, but I mean, otherwise, I've been. I mean, I haven't met any escorts this week. That's for sure. So <laughs> yeah, me either. That's two of us. Uh, <laughs> let's not bring it up. Just anymore. get that on record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just him. Just him. Uh, it's not confirmed. Okay. That's that's fair. It could she be a never, Tinder date. A, yeah. It could totally, have been like a she real. She took her shoes off. Yeah, that's, that was, confer- that's, that's a confirmation. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have taken my shoes off in that. No, not in so that weird. unit. I know no. which unit that is. I would not have <laughs> taken my shoes off in there. It's okay. Hey, I got I got a cleaner in. They're, yeah, they're cleaning good. it as we speak. So, oh, good. So you can so invite her back. Yeah. How about you, Marco? How was your week? That was good, man. Uh, just getting into the things with the, the whole real estate journey. It's getting pretty busy there. Um, so doing the agent stuff in Windsor. And then we had the event, mm-hmm. which was awesome. And like for them, it's probably like a 30 minute drive. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. four and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> which means I need to sleep like eight hours afterwards to recoup. No. Just yeah. the drive, so. I, I was exhausted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can only it imagine. Long, it was a long, it was, long. What, it was like eight till like eight seven. to five, eight to no, it went longer, it went longer than that. Longer. Yeah. We just, yeah. we bounced early. I, we both had offers to lose that evening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you, you had an offer you said, right? I also Marco? lost an offer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I went home and lost an offer. Marco went home and lost an offer. It was a great day for all. Yeah. I just went home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You so, called your friend that you met. So No, no, no. Don't say this shit. That never happened. Didn't get her number. Didn't oh, get her name. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it wasn't Becca. We learned it wasn't Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't her. Yeah. So, okay. So that was super weird, first of all, because Phil and Marco know each other through me. Not, yeah, not, yeah. but didn't. Uh, not you really even know each no. other. No, not we'd never spoken. That I mean, was we've, f- we've exchanged yeah. Instagram, YouTube, and yeah. Facebook yeah. comments. We're social friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, media. so they just met randomly at that event. Yeah. He, Marco comes behind me, puts his hands on me. I'm like, "Who's this?" And I see him, and I was like, "I didn't even know how to react." I was like, "What the fuck? Like, yeah. What are you doing yeah, here?" Yeah. But yeah, it was a good time. That yeah, was good. So let's get into this now. You're on the podcast for a reason. You're not just here. I came not here just, to see you guys. To you're not just a pretty yeah, face, I came, I came here to see you guys. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> hang out, put up some that's right. decorations. We put him to work. <laughs> yeah. that's right. He comes up dressed all nice and we're like, grab this, take this, hammer that. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. We're here. So, okay. So how did you get into real estate? It had to start before university. I, I know that. No, right? it didn't actually. Oh, wow. So, um, you know, when I was really young, like I'm talking eight years old, I used to walk around the house and be like, mom, I'm going to be the richest person to ever live. <laughs> And this is like eight years old. My mom's always like, yeah, yeah, chill out, chill out. It's not going to happen. But I just always got really obsessed with making money. Like when I was really young, maybe like 15, 16, I used to like rent out community centers and like hire security guards and stuff. And I paid my friend $500 just to sign because I was too young. Like just making money, like things like that I really liked. 
Um, Wait, what did you do? Did you flip the community center to another no, group that wanted to rent? No, oh, I okay. Oh, and okay. actually, the first You're time wholesaling I wholesaling community centers. Yeah, no, not wholesale. The first time I DJed, man, I literally had iTunes playing, and I had like headphones like this, and they weren't even plugged in. That's amazing. and I was just like, oh, pretending, fake it right? till you make it. Yeah, and you'd make like a couple thousand in a night, right? And back then, like that's huge money. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I went to university, I read a ton of books on the stock market. Hmm. Um, and then when I was seventeen, you know, I started investing in stocks made money through that. And then I kind of knew that I wanted to jump into the real estate game. So as soon as I made enough, you know, I liquidated that and jumped in, but no man, no prior. I didn't know anybody else that invested in real estate. I didn't really know anything about real estate before. It was like a pretty, pretty new thing. So, so what led you down the path of real estate? How did you choose that out of everything else you could have done? Yeah, it's a good question. So leverage was really attractive to me Mm -hmm. um, because I could probably make pretty similar returns in the stock market. I I did. Um, But the thing is I can't leverage the money. So that leveraging, especially early on when you don't have that much capital was huge for me because I knew that it would take me too long doing it through the stock market, right? So that was big. And then also, you know, you and I being in Waterloo, we kind of like witnessed the student housing boom, right? Yeah, yeah. We saw it like when me and him him came, like there was like one or two buildings. Now they build like six buildings a year, right? Yeah, it's Um, crazy. So seeing that market happen was when I specialized in student housing and I was like, okay, Mm -hmm. cool. I'm going to stick to one thing that I really understand and just hammer home on it. And that's, that's what I do. I want to touch on the student housing thing, yeah. but for a sec, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take a little... A side? Yeah, side, side, that is. side piece, a little, a little swerve. The people a little side piece, eh? A little side, a little side piece? You're going to call Becca? <laughs> <laughs> or not Becca? He's going to be single once this Oh my God, we're not posting this episode, man. Fuck. Carry on. Anyways, um, so... <laughs> Okay, <laughs> when I when I went to school, to when we're not cutting this, there's no, no cuts. No, this is straight raw going on. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. She probably won't watch straight it. Straight raw. That's fine. <laughs> we're past the two minute mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're we're too deep. Okay, so so when we first went, I think you went a year before me. I, I'm presuming. I don't even know, man. Like I said, like the, the only class I went to was the one that we met in. So <laughs> yeah. That's so good. Okay. I don't know when you. Were okay, there. so so when I went. My first year, yeah. properties were selling for like 200,000, 250 yeah. around there you could pick up. So I had some prior knowledge of real estate, my dad Obviously. being in the industry and uh, my whole goal was to get my license. I went to for same reason as you. I just went to learn something. It wasn't to get a you know bank job. I, went, I was yeah, in yeah. economics finance. I never went to go in that industry. It was just to kind of strengthen my knowledge of real estate and mm-hmm. how to, how to do things. And it was useful. It was, yeah. it was useful. It was yeah. Useful. There was, there was parts that were useful. A lot of it's bullshit. A lot of electives yeah, yeah. kind of like, there's no point of yeah. electives really, but yeah. I mean, I get it. They want their money. Well, electives are there so that we can raise the GPA, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that too. Yeah. yeah. That's where you get your, like <laughs> you take your woman studies course yeah, or yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. That's the easy hundo. Anyway. So, so in first year is when I told everybody back home, all my family members, Hey, buy, buy places in Waterloo. This is really mm. cheap. It's going to go up. Like th- there's, um, what, what was it? Blackberry at the time, mm-hmm. Google, um, the universities, Waterloo, right. I mean, is way bigger than Laurier and Laurier has the same population as Queens. Queens's campus is yeah. way bigger, much, yeah. much bigger. It's like a kilometer long. If I don't know, don't quote me, but it's, and it's, Conestoga too. and Conestoga is right beside on the same street, just yeah. blocks. Yeah. So, so from the first year to the fourth year, I was there. Property value went from 250 to 550, 500. The same little area, even more. So it doubled in value in that four year period. Mm-hmm. People could have made a lot of money really oh, yeah. quick. People did make a lot yeah, of money. People exactly. did, yeah, yeah the people like, who got in. Like I was super active in it because I was working in the property management yeah. the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was with these companies as they're acquiring properties, as they're demolishing them, building apartment buildings. Um, it was just super exciting. Like I fell in love with it. Like I would work, you know, 40 hours a week. I just really, really enjoyed it. But like the amount of money they were making too, right. was ridiculous. Yeah. The whole market was just crazy. So that's a funny story too. That was, I think the first time we met. Yeah. Yeah. The first time we met, this is already the third property management student housing company. I purposely wanted to work for as many as I could to learn their different strategies. Right. Right. Cause I always knew that I was going to do that, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's how I met you. You were my first client, <laughs> Ivy Towns, three bedroom. Yeah. Nice luxury, were you like nice a, a, an applicant at the time? Is no, that... no, I was signing. Like yeah, I, yeah, this was, signing. I, I was in his deal. office. We closed deals. Yeah, oh yeah. I was closing <laughs> deals. I closed. Him. I was like, Hey, I'm a realtor. <laughs> <laughs> I closed him. That's when I was uh, licensed. So no, that was my first deal. And then we had, um, what was the class we had? It was like macro 
analysis or something. What was it called? Dynamic. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's something like that. I don't know. And that's was, bad that we both don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was one of the classes, you know, one of the classes. It was a good class, though. Like, like, we actually learned, a, that was like yeah. probably one of the classes that I learned the most of. Yeah. Especially yeah. with interest rate fluctuations. It was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's the only class that I went to. So, like, I mean, <laughs> that was a good learning experience. But yeah, so then I saw you and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was I know like, this guy from that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how we knew each other, and then we ended up being in the same group. It's small world, yeah. small Laurier. Interesting. Yeah. So, so you're working for them. What did you realize when you were working there? I mean, what things did you pick up on that oh, you man. might have not expected, or that you did expect, and that happened? Well, I didn't expect anything because, like, I come from a town of a thousand people, right? So there's this guy that lived on my street that owned a grocery store, and now that I have Geo Warehouse, <laughs> I know that he doesn't own the actual because yeah, I did check. Yeah, yeah. Um, he leases it. Geo right? Warehouse is and a dangerous thought, tool. Yeah, I oh check everything God. for everybody it's now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, so. I thought this guy was like Warren Buffett, right? Cause, and he leased a grocery store. And I'm like, right. this is the richest guy in the world. That yeah. was my role model. And then I came to Waterloo and saw these guys building things. And I was like, no, these are the yeah. richest guys yeah. in the world. But dude, I was a sponge. Like, you mm -hmm. know, some mm -hmm. people were there to get their paycheck. I could care less if I got paid or not. Yeah. Um, I just learned absolutely everything. You knew if you could take all that info, you could do great things. Yeah. With it and I was super nosy. Like, you know, I did things that weren't like I was a leasing agent predominantly, but I would do everything. I wanted to be part of like the maintenance. Mm -hmm. I want to know why they're making decisions, the accounting department, everything. So I kind of learned everything on how it works. I um, mean, I think that's why now, like when I do student housing, people always ask me like, Oh, is it a handful? To me, it's just kind of like second nature now, right? Yeah. Like, that's the thing that I know. So, I think that's a big difference between it for a lot of people though, right? Cause a lot of people will look at a job, get a job description, put themselves in that one position and be happy like that for the rest of their days. And, and want to raise. And yeah. want to raise. Yeah. And complain when additional work gets piled on, yeah, especially yeah. if it's in like a smaller growing company. Yeah. I think I, I'm very similar. Is I'll thrive in a tiny company that has me doing a hundred different things. Because I can know how the machine works yeah. by the end of the day, right? And then you can tweak and build your own machine as you have. Yeah, well, I think it's like purpose built, right? Like some people get a job while they're in university just to pay for tuition. Like if yeah. I'm working at a Dairy Queen, I'm probably not going to be asking these kind of questions, right? Yeah. Unless you're trying cream. to buy Dairy Queen franchises. Yeah. Warren Buffett owns it. Yeah, owns the whole thing, so. <laughs> no, but like it's a purpose thing, right? So like when you go in there with the intention, like I'm going to learn absolutely everything I can. Um, but eventually, like I try to get into the acquisition side mm -hmm. and they weren't letting me. And I was like, you know what? This is where it ends, right? Yeah. There's nothing else I have to learn here. I'll yeah. go acquire them on my own now. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how, so after that, what happened after that? So that was the third company you were with, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I stayed with them for a while. So I did the property management thing. And then, so this company was a little bit different. They used to build student condos and they would sell the units out. Like the one you lived in was privately. Oh, owned. cool. Remember mm -hmm. like the thing with the yeah. It's like that society thing we went to, eh? is it the, the London place? Yeah. 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 The Lux. Yeah. Lux. yeah, that, yeah, guy yeah, yeah. Builds, that guy built Lux in Waterloo yeah, as well. Yeah. And <laughs> Icon. Oh that's really? Icon too. The same too? developer. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm gotcha. a nerd when it comes to developers, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I, your I love, Oh yeah, I love them, and like even Tridel here too is my favorite. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. So anyway, I ended up, you know, moving from a leasing agent. You know, I did pretty well with the company, and ended up being the first ever sales agent, which I had to like. I pushed so hard to get that. Like, I got like right. seven no's from seven different people, and I just kept asking. Um, so then I was kind of the lead of sales for Kitchener for these new condo developments. Um, and that's when like I sold, you know, about like five and a half million of pre-construction condos well before I was licensed. Right. Um, but yeah. And then once I kind of hit the point where, you know, during that I was buying property in Windsor, I'm going to hit the point where my cash flow was high enough where I didn't have to work anymore. And I was right. like, okay, cool. I'm going to go jump over to Windsor and let's see what I can do there. So, nice. so then you moved back home. <laughs> Yeah, well, I moved to Windsor, not not back oh, home. Oh, so where's back home? Yeah, back home, small town, West Lorne. It's like probably an hour and a half from Windsor. Oh, okay. an hour and a half from Waterloo, smack in the middle. Oh, I knew oh. I knew nobody in Windsor, dude. Like, okay, I didn't know anybody. My real estate agent, I guess. Oh, yeah, right. That's that's, that's actually crazy. I, I yeah. thought you were like no, from like, around Windsor. Didn't know anybody. Didn't really care though either, because like I'm I'm mm -hmm. there for a purpose, right? Yeah. So driven. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now. Are you living in one of your units? Yeah, 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 but not for long. So my tenants, I guess you're going to find out now if you watch this <laughs> podcast, but I'm out. <laughs> no, so January 1st, I'm moving to a, to a condo just because, you know, it's tough living with, with student rentals. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I did, I was living in, in, you know, my most recent project and it was great, you know, 
it's uh it's very well run we have a maid that comes bi-weekly and stuff so it's cool sweet but uh you know you gotta spread your wings eventually no yeah. of course i'm 24 years old i'm an yeah. old man <laughs> so when when was the point then where how many how many doors were you at or like what was the yeah, stage in the 13. journey when you said i'm yeah. out yeah, yeah 13 so 13. once okay. i hit 13 doors and like the cool thing is like you know a lot of people buy a lot of properties and that's super cool as well but like mm -hmm. you know i think it's cool when you can do a lot with relatively little properties right what and monica said this at the event she says this all the time why own a hundred with the work required for a hundred yeah. when you can just maximize and retire with two or three or four or 13 or whatever it yeah. is two or three, four and by Toronto. doors by yeah. doors you're probably you mean like bedrooms, bedrooms. yeah because bedrooms rentals because rentals different. Rent. Yeah. and like this isn't lean fire either like mm -hmm. not retired on a budget like i'm nowhere close to spending right know, the cash flow like yeah not even close right um we can help with that with, with <laughs> <laughs> we're going out tonight and we're gonna help them spend that <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you know, that's done with two properties. And honestly, mm -hmm. it was done in eight months as well. You know, and I started with pretty much nothing really. Like, you know, I put 10% down on the first deal, which in yeah. Windsor was like 16K. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man. And then to oh, like, Jesus. and then to clean it up. So we'll think about wow. this though. Let's talk about this because this yeah. is pretty crazy. So, you know, you start with 16K, cleaning it up, you know, closing expenses. I'm all in maybe $21,000. And from that Eight months later, you know, you're able to retire yep. just by doing like certain cash flow properties. It's pretty cool mm -hmm. what's possible there. And like, I, you know, I honestly didn't even think Toronto could cash flow until I met you guys. Dude, nobody does, like, right? I, and I thought they were lying. But. Nobody <laughs> does. When we, when I finally like sit somebody down and break them down when it comes to the numbers, they're like, no. Yeah, I, I remember, I remember in Waterloo, I was <laughs> talking to you and two other of our classmates yeah and you were kind of telling your model and i was like yeah we do the same in toronto and everybody just looked at me like, <laughs> like you're full of shit yeah asshole. there's no chance and i was just like this is a sports guy isn't it yeah, yeah i was like who is this guy like this guy probably parties too much i was yeah. the same though but like well, i when i first did. started i was <laughs> barry with not windsor but barry yeah. hamilton oshawa right and like cool i'm following the rain markets of like their really? high cash flow and then I, I was moving into Toronto and I kind of, I met Simon at the point when I started working for him and he was like, we're doing the same thing that I was doing, but in Toronto and the renovation costs were always cheaper too. And I'm like, no, no, it just does it. It can't, but I want to know how you do it. Yeah. So I'm going to sit here and suck it all up. And it works great. Like oh, it works better than a lot of the other models. Especially if you have the capital, like, because that's you know, the biggest that's, thing. That's, Smaller that's, towns yeah. are attractive for beginners, but like yeah. if you have the capital and you're like, you know, I don't know if you want to tell them or not what you can cash flow on this most. Recently. Oh yeah, this this yeah. six seventy one purchase price with fifty k or under worth of renovations is going to cash flow before refinancing probably like eighteen hundred to two grand a month, which is crazy. And you're in Toronto. So yeah, and, Toronto. and we're close to Toronto, new transit right? lines and condos being built and like. But, but in Windsor, you would own an eight unit get, apartment. Building. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you have fifteen of these things. <laughs> but the ca like that's great cash flow. Do you yeah, know I mean? like super and, surprising to me. And that's what I that's what I like about trying like the low door count, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can get that cash flow. Yeah, it's a harder entry point, but you can get that cash flow with less doors, means less management. Mm -hmm. I can be pickier about my tenants just because of the location a little bit more. Um, but yeah. Easy. What I like too is in Toronto, I, this isn't supposed to be a Toronto podcast. Well, no. it, well, actually, technically it is a Toronto. And Marco ducks a little yeah, bit. Te well, technically <laughs> it is a Toronto podcast. Say Windsor up there? <laughs> <laughs> it, technically it is, but I mean like, What's nice is you spend that 50 grand. That's such a fraction of the cost of the home. Yeah. Where like in a lot of markets, like how Windsor used to be when you, when you got in, that was, that's like half the purchase price. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like now it's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's all relative though, no. right? Yeah. yeah. Like it, it's, you, it's, it's all just relative. It's just kind of sliding scale. Yeah. 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 And it depends like when you scale up too, right? But mm -hmm. yeah, it's a different thing. Like, you know, the student housing, for example, like you're saying more doors, it's definitely more management. Mm -hmm. But like, to me, I look at it as like, an opportunity to improve my skills, right? Because oh, yeah. now I can see what do the students not like? What do they yeah. like on, under my roof, right? Yeah. There's no one else influencing the decisions. Um, so then down the road, you know, as I build the property management company and add more doors to it, um, mm -hmm. it it's a great experience. Yeah, I mean, and you're so early in the journey, right? Mm -hmm. That like you have the time to throw in and like yeah. just work in that student management space of things. Yeah. I think that's what always kept me out of it, right? Because I, I've been to student rentals and that, Personally, this was always my hold back. Mm -hmm. I've I've been to student rentals. I've, heard I've partied in student rentals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've helped wreck some student, student rentals. Student yeah, <laughs> and I, I was like, shit, I don't, don't want to own the student rentals that I've ever been to, yeah. right? But I know so many people that are doing it 
in the proper way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've seen right. your videos. Plug yourself right now. You'll plug at the end, but where could everybody find you? If you can spell my first and last name, Marco Ugbaba, you can find me on everything. That's Facebook, true. YouTube, Instagram. And his, his YouTube page is awesome. I mean, you can see some of his work and he does it the right way. Where yeah. it's, it's a lot like how we do it here too. It's very similar. I mean, like if you look at your properties, uh, you, I guess you haven't seen any of ours we haven't shown, yeah, yeah. but the quality of it is it's good quality stuff. Yeah. Like it's not like you're not like cheaping out every way you can. Right? Well, it's yeah. like it's garbage like in gets garbage board. out, yeah. right? Yeah. You yeah. put it in good sure. stuff. You're going to get good applicants. I'm just, I'm just taking the keyboard. Okay. Spear's running away right now. We got to have you in, in the screen there. No, that's fine. Um, yeah, like <laughs> it, it's not even just like, because yeah, you raise your rents and you get better tenants. But to me, it's like, I love the feeling knowing that I provide good quality yeah. service, right? Like when my name's attached to something, I don't want people living in like four foot basements. Or yeah, like you don't want to be the slumlord. Or the washrooms. No, like I want to take pride. Hot holes. And I feel like it's reasonable for me to ask for a higher return mm -hmm. for that, right? But I like being the quality provider like you know a lot of times too like when i was buying materials like at home depot or whatever and i would tell them it's student rental they'll be like oh just get the worst like it's students. Yeah. Yeah. and i'm like dude because i was just a student like i'm like yeah. dude, screw off man yeah. like what yeah. do you mean like these are people right like let's get them the quality materials so yeah, I, I think you perfect. found find the difference like when you work for it was sage right yeah, at yeah, the time yeah. yeah like yeah so sage and, and a plug to sage like in waterloo by far the best run yeah, you know, and I, I worked for so. a lot of a lot of companies. Um, Sage is by far the best. Yeah, yeah. we never had any issues yeah. with Sage. Yeah, great quality. Like, yeah, we had a terrible landlord. Yeah, I remember I'm that like, guy. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was the worst. That yeah, was nice to me. Oh, he was it. Man, nice to me. he he came in saying there was cigarette butts all over the place. Oh, is None this of us the guy smoked. that I've even heard of? Yeah, you've like, heard of him. He, he was terrible. Battery, he had a battery powered Volkswagen Golf. Yeah, I remember. About yeah, yeah, yeah. battery was a battery engineer. Man, he like we helped him. Like like he wanted to get rid of some things or. When we moved in, like there was a bunch of broken furniture, hmm. and uh, then he he bought the place, so he was like, like it was his responsibility to fix it now. And we're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We kind of want our couch fixed because it's broken and we never broke it. Right. So we like helped him move it to his car. We were like expecting a truck or something. This guy had this little Volkswagen. We had to like <laughs> throw it on it top. In. Yeah. No, like we like pushed it in. Like yeah, it was like bougie. Like well, I don't know what what does bougie even mean. I always use it I as bougie. Is like it's good. Like yeah, it's like fancy. Yeah, it's yeah, fancy. Okay. He uses it backwards. Like the way you're dressed right now is bougie. You know, you're looking fresh. I'm just, I'm just is looking it? Black. He's like a black t-shirt. look. No, man, but I'm glad you brought up the maintenance side of things because, you know, and again, another plug to Sage, like watching the way they handled maintenance requests and stuff too was a huge like learning curve mm -hmm. for me because now whenever a tenant messages me or whatever, I'm there like right yeah. away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I learned that from them. They're like super responsive as well. So well, if you let it degrade to shit, your tenants are going to treat it like shit Absolutely. and it's just going to yeah. continue, right? Yeah. I think something with student rentals too, I feel, depending on the city, right? Because a lot of, most of the students, it's their parents that are actually renting the space. 100%. Right? So 100%. When, you can, when you can appeal to a, a higher audience, a higher quality product, the parents are likely going to feel, hey, okay, my, my son or daughter is a little safer here. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll cough up an extra 50 bucks a month or so for More. this place versus the More. piece of garbage down the street. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's a huge opportunity because, you know, most landlords that do student living have the mentality, it's students. You yeah. Know, just get them in there. It doesn't matter. And they treat them like shit. Right. Um, so it's so easy to stand out because when yeah, if you're even people are always like, decent. whoa, like this is pretty absurd for student housing. So, mm -hmm. like, once you build the brand around it, too, I don't know what route, like, you know, the viewers would want to go, but, like, it's super easy to stand yeah. out, and then you get those rental. Yeah, and yeah. It's, always to, it's always best to be a, at least a little bit nicer than mm -hmm. everything on the market, because then you get to put your price at the highest level, yeah, yeah. and, and it's worth it. service, and, too, is yeah. huge, right? Like, yeah. I think um, I, something's to be said, too, for, like, how close you are to your target demographic mm -hmm. in terms of just age, yeah. lifestyle, yeah. all that stuff. Like, I found the same when I was doing a lot of, like, the leasing in Toronto, right? Half of my applications came from basically Phil adjacent. Yeah. And Spiro, I'm sure you're finding, or you will be finding a lot of lot of similarities yeah. between like you and your applicants. So you can kind of connect a lot yeah, easier. Yeah. yeah. And you get what they want a lot easier. For sure. Yeah. And you can kind of design and tailor your places to that well, too, like, right? Well, like I was actually, so I lived in my last student house, like until I still do. And I'm the youngest dude in my unit, right? Because they're all master student stuff. And I think it's hilarious. That's so good. I yeah, love it. Because I'm the youngest, <laughs> but I'm their landlord. So it's so funny. But I, yeah, you, you hit the nail right on the head. Like you totally get what they're looking for right yeah. so huge advantage so you told me since you did retire yeah uh young yeah 
you had a lot of time Very to spend young. in your units. Yeah, and, yeah. And I overheard you saying something about how, you know, you would stay in them 16 hours a day and Not, more. Sl- yeah, sleep more. in them. So yeah, I'm happy you brought that up because I don't think a lot of people see that. Well, I guess, cause I don't talk about it. So, you know, when they look on the outside and I have people ask me for similar returns that I get mm-hmm. and I'm always like, what are you willing to put into it? Right. right. Because what you don't see is, you know, multiple 20 hour days, seven days yeah. a week for five weeks. Right. Like, you know, there was no days off. There's no, there's not even more than four hours sleep in, in one night, like for six, six weeks. So are you willing to do that? Like, are you willing to sleep on the floors and do that stuff? But then me and Phil were also talking. We we're like, no, Dude, you, you totally probably could have just hired that. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely hired that out. But you know what? It's an experience, right? And this, you, want, you need to learn it. You need yeah. to learn it, man. Yeah. And, and, you know, you feel so good after too, because. You look back and you're like, yeah, I fucking did so that like shit. you now know you can hire it out, yeah, and then go back to the job, see what someone's doing, and say, yeah. yes, you're doing this right, no, you're doing this wrong, and I know how not, long things take, right? right? Yeah, that's you would big. not be able to do that if you'd never done it yourself, yeah, right. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of doing it yourself first, and I tell this to all my clients too. We have a management company. If you want us to manage, if you scale, you grow, you can't take it on anymore. However, I advise you should try and manage it yourself for at Always least for, for the, the first, first one. I say the same thing. Yeah, Always just you need get to know used that. to it. If yeah. you can't know if the manager's managing it wrong, if you've never done it yourself, yeah. right? And same thing with contractors, construction. Mm-hmm. If you know how a house works, you can then sub it out if you want to, right? And you can at least make the decision moving forward. Unless when, you really your time don't give is a shit. Spent. Unless you just have that cash yeah, flow yeah, yeah. and you're already, you're yeah. already making, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. It's, six, seven. Different, right? But what yeah. I noticed with real estate, like because I come from a stock background, Stocks are investing. I click mm-hmm. buy mm-hmm. and I'm chilling. That's yeah. it. Right? Real estate and is I'm far done. more active. Real estate is a business. It's investing, yeah. but it's also a business. It's mm-hmm. like a yeah. hybrid of both. So I, it depends on how you want to do it. Like you said, if you have just fat stacks of cash mm-hmm. and you don't Doesn't have matter. time, like, you know, if you're a lawyer, whatever the case is, right? Like yeah. You don't want to be doing Then you should joint tour. venture with Phil. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you should joint venture with Phil. You know, yeah. that's the answer. But. <laughs> I think Phil's a little more strapped than I am right now, so you can join Venture with Spiro. <laughs> Phil just bought 671. <laughs> That's cheap, man. What are you talking about? So how much did you? Were you very hands on with your projects, or did you just yeah. oversee them? No, well, I, was hand, I didn't hire anybody. Like the only people I'd hire are like plumbers when you need the plumber to come mm-hmm. in, someone to do the shingles, because like I wasn't. So you were like the that. handyman on on job. Yeah, well, like my dad, full contractor. My, my dad full on can do everything. It's pretty much just like the way Serbian's mm-hmm. role is like pretty much is him yelling at me to bring him stuff. Yeah. I mean, oh my god. Oh yeah, you're my god. You're probably the same, right? It's yeah, exact yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, my dad's yeah. gonna watch this. He watches my episode. <laughs> I hope my this dad is, watches. He's too, gonna man. hear this and be like, ah ha ha. That's so funny. Yeah, it just yells at me, and then whatever I bring is the wrong one, you know. So after a while, I learned that i would he'd be like get get something i'd bring like six things. yeah i'd be like you can't bro it's got to be in here it's like okay. <laughs> it's not, it's not even but yeah like i did definitely did stuff like painting you know i remember the yeah, one night painting. we were kind of running behind schedule um i worked all day i painted until about six in the morning slept until 8 a.m so it took two hours and then just went on the next day again like you know 15 16 hour a day so yeah i did i did all sorts of stuff um but it was a learning experience like i'm happy i did it and like yeah. that's also how i was able to like do all of that stuff for so little, right? Of yeah. course, like barely cost me anything. Yeah, so that was f- a few years because your life, labor's but, free. You right? had that yeah, luxury exactly. of like of your time being worth a lot more in a sense, but a lot less at the same time. So, yeah. so you didn't have that job that you needed. You know, you're making forty bucks an hour, thirty bucks an yeah, hour, whatever I'm, it is. I'm still getting paid from the other property. You're still getting you're paid, not. so you can so. either make more or put in that value of what you're going to make yeah. into the property. So let's say you saved what twenty grand at least, yeah, at least. Sure. So that's like you were getting paid that much at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like, I don't know, I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. See, See and my dad kind of looked at each other actually because we were doing a secondary unit in the basement, and when we finished the main floor, my dad's like, "Oh, like I'm, I'm done," and I'm like. <laughs> We're gonna build a kitchen downstairs. He's like, no fucking way. Like, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. And I look at him I'm like, we're gonna build a kitchen in the basement. And we got like three days to get this done. So we're sitting on the riverside, because I live right on the riverside, it's where the house is. And my dad's like, dude, there's no fucking way we can get this kitchen done. I look on Facebook ads, this guy's selling cabinets, and it happens to be the exact by oh, the God. inch cabinet sets that I need. <laughs> I get him to drop it off yeah. of my house, oh, baby. toss them up, we drill them in paint like paint over it and stuff it, it was crazy how it worked out but he looked at me like i was a lunatic he's like there's no <laughs> way we're building a kitchen in the don't basement. you tell me i can't do this <laughs> i'm like the kitchen's going in the <laughs> fucking basement like it's gonna happen but yeah it worked out man it looks great um so we got it done but never again 
<laughs> you're we talking both, about, that's both agreed. You're, you're talking about basements now. So so there's a little bit of differences between the Toronto market and yeah, I hate the, the Windsor market. So I hate the differences. Yeah, it's actually crazy. So why don't you explain some of the regulations? Well, the ceiling height is probably the main one, right? Like you guys mm. probably still need egress windows at yes. a certain yeah, side, yeah, right? Yeah, which yeah. is great. I agree yeah. with that. For yeah, wait, you don't? No. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, you, we do. Oh, no, they okay. do. They do. They do. It's like, oh my God. Yeah, no, 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 we did no that. that's you not the crazy build part. build a five foot box and no, be good to go. The crazy part is like, we need Yao Ming ceilings in the basement for some reason. <laughs> What's, how high Six is Yao? 6'11". Oh, shit. And it's okay. just ri- ridiculous, right? Yeah. Like, so, but wow. we have them. Luckily, the house came that's with good. it. So, but how, how, how often is that in the market, though? Never, how man. It never happens. You know, some big gotcha. contractors will like actually lower the floor in the basements. And it so costs expensive. like 30, 35, but it makes sense sometimes. Yeah. Right? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the, the math is just math. If I had to do I wouldn't have even done it. Um, so we got lucky. The only thing was the windows weren't big enough. So we, we did get them enlarged mm. and then we put that's the not windows that bad. in. But yeah, like, I mean. Yeah, the differences suck. I think That's like a six-inch difference in height compared to Toronto. Yeah, ours is so six-five. Are five. people taller yeah. in Windsor? Is that like, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. I mean, I think I think a lot has to do with maybe the more new builds that are in Windsor. I'm the, assuming Think of the age of most Toronto homes is 100, 80 to 120 is fairly common, right? So back in those like, days, what, they weren't hundreds necessarily of thousands, building so of tall. Well, in Windsor, in Windsor they're thousands. probably maybe even older. And the reason I say that is because the prices have been so low for so long. Like just mm. recently, they've gone up. So there's, it made no sense to build. It's not worth it. Yeah, the, yeah. the labor is, you don't, get, the, you don't get your... Now, building. finally, for the first time ever, you're starting to see new construction. It's amazing to see it, but... That's so, good. So what is in Windsor that makes it a, an attractive market? Yeah, well, you know, it really depends on what your style is. So the cash flow is going to be extremely attractive, really, no matter what mm-hmm. way you go. Uh, so student housing to me is very attractive because that's my thing. And that's yep. what brought me to Windsor. Um, so student housing, at least, you know, they have a ton, a huge influx of international students. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so much so that they literally have to live like a 20 minute bus ride away. Wow. Like, because the housing supply is just not there, wow. which is great for me. Um, in terms mm-hmm. of the, the city of Windsor, I mean, the main thing that's happening right now in Windsor is Detroit, right? Yeah. So Detroit has been a slum for a really long time. Yep. Um, and it's and it's really starting to turn around. Yeah. And I'm not just saying it's, it's starting to turn no, around. No, it is. It, it is. literally I, I is starting to turn around. I can't go buy a house for an iPhone anymore. Yeah. Like, you know, and there's a lot of investment. There's a lot of capital going into Detroit. And, you know, we're building a brand new bridge as well. And I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys seen the renderings, but it looks amazing. Like, it looks nice. really sexy. Um, so we got the transportation route. We're right on the border. And now that border isn't irrelevant like it's been for so long, yeah. right? Since 2008, it's been irrelevant. It's no longer irrelevant. Yeah. We're starting to open up trade there again. And what we're seeing is... You know, a lot of people, they'll say there's not a lot of jobs in Windsor. Uh, and I'm not going to really argue you that much on that <laughs> topic. But the thing is, there's a lot of jobs opening in Detroit. Um, and we actually have a big base of people that work in Detroit. Gotcha. And mm-hmm. they travel back to Windsor. Right? So, or so yeah, that, that's really what it has going. So even if you're not in the student market, mm-hmm. um, you know, you can still tailor to, to these. How, to how these many places. schools are there in Windsor? So you have two. So you have University of Windsor and then you have St. Clair College. Okay. Um, and St. Clair College actually has a bigger um, supply shortage than the University of Windsor does. Huh. The reason why I don't invest there is because it's located in South Windsor. And so South they're, Windsor they're is very pretty expensive. different locations. They're very different locations. Um, and it's really expensive to buy a house in South Windsor. So the rent is the same, but instead gotcha. of paying 250 for the house, maybe 20 in renovations, I have to pay 350 375 for the house, 400 for the For house. the same rents. For the same rents, yeah. right? So it doesn't make sense to me. And I also prefer university students. I think that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. yeah, that doesn't make sense. What, what's your typical cash flow? Well, it depends on the property, right? So, you know, I have one that, you know, cash flows 1500 another one that cash flows 3300 per month. Um, it really depends. Like, you know, I guess if you're to asking for like an investor that wants to be hands off, it's probably going to be high hundreds, you know, for a five bedroom house, you know, mm-hmm. maybe low thousands. You're just buying like to purchase turnkey. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, if you just want to be hands off, you know, you don't want to put too much work into it. Yeah. You're probably expecting low thousands, high hundreds, but you know, the, the cost of cap, like the amount of capital you have put in is relatively small, right? Yes. 20% down payment. It's going to be turnkey. You're probably putting in 50 to $60,000 and you're going to return a cash flow of $1,000 per month, right? No, that's great. So, so what's the, I, I don't know if uh, you know too much about this. I'm sure you'd know a little bit, but what, what, what is, how does the mortgage qualification work there? So what's like an average salary of someone that gets qualified uh, to, to be able to afford more? As you said, you have to put, let's say 50, 60 yeah. down. Yeah. What, what what would you say? Well, it's going to be pretty low, right? I mean, I don't know the exact numbers. Like, definitely work with mm-hmm. a mortgage yeah, broker. Yeah, I'm not going to sure. pretend that I do. But, I mean, you know, the housing price is so low, right? Like, I mean, you know, we're talking less than a studio apartment here. So, it's like yeah, a really legit. low. You don't need to make that much. Like, I mean, off of a $50,000 salary, you should be able to get a mortgage up to 300000 I could be yeah. totally wrong. 
But to me, that makes intuitive sense. Um, so you're talking relatively low, like an entry level starter job. You should be able to mm-hmm. rock and roll, assuming you have the capital. Right? I think another thing that helps here too, from a mortgage, and again, I'm also none of us are mortgage professionals on the panel. We don't even here. know anything about real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, but something that does help, especially if you're buying turnkey. Yeah. No, I mean maybe if it's a student rental, that's a different story because banks maybe aren't the well, biggest. Depends fan. how many bedrooms. But yeah, so yeah. if you can if you can justify, hey, I'm buying this as a rental. Hey, what's the appraised rents or what are the actual rents? Mm-hmm. That's also going to help boost your income, right? Yeah. So you could go from making 50k a year to qualify for 200, 250, 300 thousand. Absolutely. Once you tack on the rents, that could add another hundred grand in terms of your carrying cost uh, or your your ability to carry the property. I should say. Yeah, that's actually how I got my second deal was adding right. the rental income I had from the first mm-hmm. property. And mm-hmm. actually, the first property got burred or reappraised based off of the rental income. I never even had an appraiser enter the house, which is crazy. They give you just a straight straight. I was like, rent- this is my rental income. I'm only asking for this amount, and they're like, yeah, that seems fair to me. So they gave me the money. They ne- I never Windsor. had an appraiser come in. Now this refinance I'm doing, the appraiser needs to come in, mm-hmm. um, which I tried to argue. So I, we tried that on one of these in, uh, in Toronto. <laughs> you yeah. tried to argue. Yeah. Well, not that I, the house is nice. I, yeah. just, I don't want to just no. give me the money, right? Like, yeah. I, I tried it on uh, on Blackthorn when we first did it. I was like, this place makes so much money. They're like, we don't give a shit. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm like, okay, thanks. Yeah, right. I don't know. But I we still got our refi, just not as much as we wanted. You can build the case as well of yourself, right? Like, you know, yeah. I talk about who I am as a person, my experience in this mm-hmm. industry and things like that. Maybe that helps. Maybe it didn't. But I don't know. It worked once. didn't work twice. Yeah, well, so try a third time. It, do you find it that there are any hiccups because of how many rooms you have? Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, you know, I made an error for sure. Um, so, you know, what I did was I waited till it was rented because... The way the first one happened, I was like, okay, if I'm cash flowing that, let's see what they give me on this right. guy because yeah. this thing's really making money. Um, and they're like, nah, not not the hugest fan of that, Marco. So uh, that was an <laughs> issue. So, you know, for future references, and I tell all my clients now, make sure you refi before, before you get you the tenants the people in. in. Yeah. Um, yeah, because then you're going to have no issue. You know, luckily for me, it's in such a good area on the river that mm-hmm. it's going to refi anyway based off of comparables. But, um, but yeah, you will run into issues with that when you have that amount of bedrooms. Also, mine's divvied up in two suites, like the secondary suite and a separate kitchen. So right. it's really four people per, so it's not as bad, right? Like yeah, if you, if have, you had eight, nine, ten per, and one which kitchen, is a couple in, bathrooms. In Windsor, and like, I just totally don't agree with that style. Um, just because, again, it's like a customer service thing yeah. for me. Like, I don't want ten people using one kitchen in my house. Right? There's a lot of problems with that. For me, like I think of wear and tear on kitchens and bathrooms. Oh, yeah. I think of customer service. Everyone's trying to cram into one bathroom in yeah, the morning. It would suck. I, from a from a refinance perspective, from like fire and things like that, if there yeah. was ever an issue, primarily. Well, how about resale? Let's talk about that's resale. And that yeah. was the next are one. You selling a 10 Who do you, you only sell it to another investor that's looking for exactly the same thing. And yeah. investors so, look for low purchase prices. Yeah. So and like, dude, you can't recap, like you can't recap the amount of money you put in converting it. Like, especially, you know, mm-hmm. some people do like, super high-end 10 bedroom one kitchen house and i'm like okay you refied it because you staged it as you know a, a single family home with yeah. like a bunch of living rooms and dens and stuff the and only like, thing that is is like a jersey shore house yeah right yeah like, but that's then, all you're selling yeah. it to but then when it comes down to it yeah like you're not going to recoup that on the no. resale right? no. so the exit strategy is pretty shit on no. that um, but yeah i don't know a lot of people do it a lot of people make a ton of money off of it i'm not going to step on anyone else's yeah. style um, that's just every investor's right. got their own thing. Everyone's right? got but their own thing. I right? think I follow a similar, like we, we stick pretty hard to like four bedroom max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything over five just sometimes becomes a bit of a management nightmare. Yeah, well, like with students, it's a little bit different because like, you know, it, you know, when we learn in finance as well. So like you're going to have fixed costs associated, right? And, you know, FC, fixed cost per unit is mm-hmm. going to go down as you add bedrooms of course. in student housing because you rent per bedroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like in Windsor, at least the sweet spot's like five. You get five right. bedroom house, you're, you're living good. You get a four bedroom you're making a little bit of money, but you know, mm-hmm. you really want to get to that five, six number. Um, and then I always say like, you know, if you're going to exceed six, you know, build them another kitchen or, or build them a secondary suite or something right. you know, just to keep the customer service going. But yeah. Do, do you find uh, what's like vacancy like in Windsor? Student rental zero, man. Like um, legit zero. Or yeah. Pretty, like pretty le- damn close to legit zero. Let me give you an example. So I finished the rentals on uh, my last property really, really late. I had like three days because the damn kitchen, the, the damn kitchen <laughs> took us so long. But so I had like three days to rent this thing out and I posted an ad and I was a little bit panicky because I'm not dropping my price, right? I want to get mm-hmm. you know the highest price for my rooms. Yeah. So I post an ad at midnight, 12 o'clock the next day. We're talking lunchtime. 
I already have the deposit in my account. Whole suites, <laughs> whole suites rented out, and I have three more people offer me more than what I signed if I'm oh. gonna take the room. Nice. So it's like that. Wow. Nice. Yeah, yeah. that's like pretty that. good. Yeah, that's that's a, a run really for good. our money here. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. It's like Toronto <laughs> market. Crazy. crazy. But I think it's the way you market it too. Like I did mm-hmm. a YouTube video tour of the house. You know, you t- you know you're again come, coming back to you know your target market yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. well. Yeah. Like I see people post like ads with like a picture of the front of the house and shit. And it's like I'm not even gonna waste my time to come look at this house. Yeah. Right? I don't yeah. care how much it is. So. Yeah. You know, the way you market it is huge as well. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, what time are you, like, you're renting it year round yeah, at yeah, random, I, random Actually, I do, between... a, I do a three-year lease. You know, you know what's Oh, up. you did you know a three-year You know how we do uh, it in Waterloo. Three-year lease. Uh-huh. So I do a three-year lease with, got me. <laughs> with the option to renew or terminate every single year. And the reason why cool. I do that is because at the end of 12 months, you can't go month to month. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to last the full three years to go month to month. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's important. Not as important for you because yeah. you can rent out whenever yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, but it's for very important that, because if somebody leaves my... in March, mm-hmm. oh, I don't want to be sitting on a room vacant until yep. like you know May or yeah. something. That's amazing. So this way, I keep covered, um, and that's how I do it at least. It's interesting. That, that was always th- just you know theorizing about student rentals. Yeah, yeah. Well, it'd that's be a always issue. been one of my it'd be a huge one, issue. Always one of my big yeah. like. Uh, how do I get around this? So that's, Ex- that's very interesting. Except right now, like the market's so crazy. So I, I put on my room right now that I'm living in for 750, just kind of for shits and giggles. I'm like, nice. let's see what we can get. My inbox was full. And this Love is it. like the worst time to rent for student right. rentals. But the room is pretty sweet. Like it's 200 square feet. And stuff. You know, I, so live, I live looking, comfortable. Who's yeah. leaving? Who's, who's leaving a room in the middle of the year to come into your room in December. Think, you know, maybe it's people that are month to month that are, you know, so far out and they're like, oh, right. we'll take it so we have somewhere, you know, to hang our hats, but as soon mm-hmm. as something better comes, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, the, the demand's definitely there. That's um, good. It's, it's, it's pretty yeah. What you find a lot in university towns too are guys usually could stick it out. Like, I mean, like mm-hmm. uh, all the guys I know that were living in res or, or got, you know, uh, apartments together, they pretty much got along and if they didn't, they, They'll lived out the rent and then you either moved or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we don't fight. Fight is all. No You're girls, totally right. man. Oh, yeah. oh my god! I think out of all the girls I knew in residence in first year, yeah, it had to be something like at least fifteen to twenty percent. Like either had this huge is math scraps. backed. This is this percentage. This is, yeah, like they, yeah, yeah. We did the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is take my word for this. I promise. <laughs> No, there was a lot of girls like moving out, fights. Totally like, true. Yeah. Totally oh, true. we had, I think the, the biggest, the craziest unit store even here I've had has been like a, a few university girls. We had a house of four and like they, the 80 pound girl kicked in the front door. <laughs> like, I mean, PCP is a hell of a drug. But I, I, had, I had a girl when I was on residence that broke my window and threw my mattress out of my window. <laughs> First year, nice year. Job, Mark. if you're watching, Matt, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I got spotted at Laurier for that. Like, really? First week. Out. Yeah, oh, someone Lord. spotted Marco's mattress. And I remember sitting down on my bed and, you know, like we were out and stuff and I was sitting down on my bed and I'm like, something's not right in my room. Be like, dude, <laughs> just threw your mattress out of the window. <laughs> Oh man! I don't know if oh, this is a box spring. That. Great. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What residence? Wow. In first year. Uh, university place. Oh, great, great time. Oh, nice. Great time. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, not all days. tenants are like this, by the way. No. Just for those that are watching, maybe for the first time, thinking <laughs> about diving into real estate. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not like that. I'm sure she paid her. Tenants are kicking time, indoors so. and throwing mattresses <laughs> out. <laughs> Oh all right God. guys um i think this has been great i think awesome. i want to know what you're doing next before we start wrapping this yeah, up. yeah, yeah. I, I know okay, i kind of yeah. know where you're at you just became an agent what's up today and what's up in the future yeah so um i'm i'm now switching to the multifamily game you cool know? like so mm-hmm. i've experienced you know the, the the single family homes and it's great um but i'm ready to go play with the big boys now uh, mm-hmm. so my next acquisition will probably be fairly soon Hopefully January, maybe a little bit after, but it's going to be multifamily, probably around six units, student housing again. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, when I'm not doing the renovations myself, I have much more time. Of um, course. So, you know, 80% of my time is going to be in the sales side of things with real nice. estate agents. As an agent, yeah. Working with investors. Yeah. Tons of fun doing it. I really enjoy it. Cool. So. And the team you're working with now? Yeah. Wind City Real Estate Team is who I'm working with. So Cassidy, Aditya. Yeah. Nice. Great team. It's a great time. Good squad. We met them for the first time this weekend. Yeah. 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 Where can we find them? Where's uh, what on social media? And... Just uh, look through my social media. Oh, and, okay. And then maybe, you can, maybe you can find them. Make a pit stop, like, yeah. subscribe, follow first, yeah. and then you can carry on to the rest so again, of them. Again, you have plug, to hit subscribe. Plug all your stuff now again. Yeah, well, it's just my first and last name. So, Spell it out for everybody. Yeah. We'll Marco, have it in the bio, but... Marco Agbaba, so M-A-R-K-O, 
A G B A B A. That's Bob and Alex. I have to say this. I have to spell it out every oh, time so I hear it. Hey man, my name's Spiro Vricellis. Try, yeah, spell, too, try spelling that out. Yeah. I was thinking I might have to change it. Yeah, my name's not hard at all. My name's pretty No, you gotta be proud. Phil. Mark Wagbaba. Spiro Vricellis. Yeah, I'm Phil. I'm Phil Gardner. Uh, I get like the double L, okay? That's the worst. Who spells it with a double L? I don't fucking know. Phil at the office spells it with an F. Yeah. I've had people ask but, but me if it's that's a girl, so yeah. it's like Philip Philina something. I've had people like ask me oh, yeah, if it was an F before. An, an F as yeah. well. And like sometimes Philly. Gardner will put the I like the high Gardner way, I could see. But like that's uncommon too. <laughs> you okay, got a really Phil. white name, dude. I just, do. Just relax. But it's a Jamaican last you know, name. Yeah, you know Phil's half not. Jamaican. <laughs> you look Jamaican. I could I could tell that right when I walked yeah. in. I was like, he's Jamaican, isn't he? Yeah. He actually eats stew beef every day. Yeah. Curry, nice curry goat is a pretty big staple in my life. What are those, uh, like the pockets with the beef in them? Patties? Pat- like, yeah, oh, patties? with the cocoa beef. buns? Or yeah. Oh, they're so good. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta, get, like, you gotta open it, put like some ketchup in there. That's He's actually I'm gonna fucking real. stab you. Ketchup? Real. Oh, real. oh Jesus. Like ketchup. No, you it's gotta put right. tomatoes, like the real stuff. No. That's a lot of effort, though, man. I don't have tomatoes. Tomatoes. I'm just gonna throw ketchup. I always have ketchup. All right, guys. We went off on a bit of a tangent there. So, uh, again, this is Phil the Kid podcast. This was a really fun episode. We should do this well, again. Absolutely. Have some, uh, we'll some of your team members. Yeah. I'm sure you're going to be in Toronto. Actually, you guys are going we're to. Hit, we're hitting up Wealth Hacker Conference tomorrow. Yeah. I Uncle, mean, Uncle G. Uh, Uncle G. The Grant Cardone. That's right. It'll be a good uh, good day. Yeah. This, this is going to be posted after that happened. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean. Too bad, suckers. I'm not going, but. Yeah, we don't know why. Spiro's just he's had a long hard week. He's a stay at home now. He worked a, he cat. worked a full 37 and a half hours Man, this week. I need to play FIFA. I, I clocked in 14 hours this week, Phil. You don't <laughs> I think I clocked in about 4. It was a pretty lazy <laughs> week, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you have time for your great card. Your Cardone yeah, zone. That's, fair. that's a learning Genetic experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm whatever. pumped. Maybe next time. We can uh, everyone can just like send Spiro pics the entire day. Yeah, just videos of us having a fucking ball. We'll have them on the podcast and I I will be Spiro. <laughs> on the podcast. Hey man, that's fine. That's the yeah, move. You're the new kid. Am I? Am I oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! There's, man. there's, there's, there's a change usurped. coming up on the podcast. <sighs> okay, I think we're wrapping this up now. I'm getting <laughs> ripped this whole podcast. <laughs> Should have never told that story. Oh god! Uh, thanks for watching, right, guys. guys. Yeah, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having me. By the way, really yeah, it was a great time. Thanks for coming on. Really you're a great it. guest. We'll have you again one day for sure. Love it. Love cool. You can find us on YouTube, iTunes Podcast, Google Play, Podbean, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Stitcher. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, I fucking heard you. I almost fucked up. Yeah, I know. I didn't have Stitcher on. All oh right, my God. now let's drink. I feel like we were yelling the whole <laughs> time. With those, we might have to turn that. Eh.